Welcome. Lovely to have you here this morning. Would you like to join with us and sing this beautiful song, Nothing is Impossible? If you're sitting in your chairs, I ask you to stand up and let's worship Jesus together. And why not dance? Have some fun. Bless you. Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken And I'm living by faith Nothing is impossible I'm not gonna live by what I see I'm not gonna live Good morning, my name's Greg, I'm pastor of New Life Christian Centre here at Christie's Beach in South Australia. Welcome to Home Church Online. It's great that we can be here together online every Sunday morning at 10am and I just trust that as you worship with us, God is really going to bless your heart. just want to mention a couple of things to you and particularly for those in our congregation. Firstly, our Zoom Connect uh, each week is on Thursday nights at 7pm. Uh, if you're in our church, uh, just let me know, text me if you'd like to be involved with that. That's a great thing uh, to be involved in. Uh, this week you will receive a letter, an actual physical letter, not an online one, uh, in the mail. And in that letter I'll have all sorts of information about church life, in particularly the roadmap that our church is taking to get us back into uh, physical gatherings over the next few months. Obviously, we're abiding by the government restrictions and recommendations for organisations. So it's exciting that it won't be long and we'll be able to have some physical gatherings together. So look out in the mail for a letter from me this week. Something else that's really important. Next Sunday is Mission Sunday and we're going to have a special offering and we'll send that information to you uh, this week. It'll be online. Our weekly connections newsletter which you can access on our website will tell you all about that but we're wanting to give people opportunity to give towards the uh, relief work going on in Vanuatu after Cyclone Harold has decimated uh, places in Vanuatu and also we're giving towards the Rice family who are missionaries in the Middle East and we really want to support them they're going through quite a difficult time at the moment so next Sunday is going to be a fantastic special World Missions Sunday we've actually uh, invited uh, Rachel Hardy and Julie Fonarito to be our guests for that service. So uh, log, log in and be a part of what's happening uh, next Sunday morning. We'd like to give you an opportunity now to give of your offering. And I just want to read a verse of scripture from Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. These are the words of Jesus. 
He says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will it be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. That's the promise of Jesus. I just love the language here that as we give, it'll be given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You know, God is not miserly in his gifts towards us. He is lavish in his gifts. He's poured out upon us so much through Jesus and all that Jesus won for us on the cross. And as we give this morning, let's give in faith. Let's really believe that as we sow our seed of the offering, uh, that we'll reap a great harvest over this coming season, not just for us and our families, but for the work of God, for the mission of Christ in our world around us. So we're going to give you an opportunity to give now. We acknowledge those that are giving online. Just go to our webpage and uh, just check out the giving page. All the information's there and we encourage you to do so. And if you can't do that, then please contact myself or one of our elders and we can help you out uh, with your offering. I think it's so important to be giving and I just love Jesus' words here that as we give, there's going to be poured out so much blessing into our lap that will just be running over. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your offering to us in the person of Jesus, your gift to us. And Father, we give our gifts to you today in faith, believing as we sow, we're going to see a reaping for your glory. We're going to see a harvest for your glory. Father, as we give, there's a receiving. And we thank you now for your blessing being poured out from heaven upon every person who's giving today. Lord, that it would indeed be a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over and poured into their lap. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, every week we're featuring uh, Rebecca Monet and she's bringing our children's and youth talk uh, and we just want to invite her to come now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Recently, I've heard a lot about purpose, God's purpose. I want to share with you all about what I've learnt and why it is so important to know. Some of you might be starting to think what job you want to have when you're older. Some of you might not be to that stage yet, but maybe you have an idea. For everyone, God has created a special plan, a plan to bring great things into our lives, much better than we can ever find ourselves. Now, our purpose is to fulfill that plan, taking the path of God's plan instead of the path of sin. Do you want to find out your plan? Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So we don't need to worry about the future. God gives us hope that his plans are good, that these unique plans for each of us will make us succeed. Later on it says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 12 to 13. God doesn't want to hide his plans from us. We can actually know them. Just like we can actually have a relationship with God. He is the living God after all, as present as he was in the times of the Bible. So seek God with all your heart, with all that you are. Be passionate, and he will let you know his plans for your life. Now here are five steps in knowing God's plan for your life. One, turn to the Bible. You would be amazed how much God opens up in your life when you purposely seek him. Two, pray for direction. Ask God to reveal his purpose for you. Three, follow the will of God. Keep his commands. Do what is right in his eyes not your own. Put your life in God's hands. 4. Research the promises of God. By knowing the many promises of God, you can uncover what God wants for you. There is over 3,000 promises, so it should narrow it down a bit. 5. Live a focused life on Jesus. By knowing our purpose, we can find ways to glorify God through our talents and gifts. Now a prayer. Dear Father, Thank you that you have promised us a life that we will prosper in if we follow you. We are so grateful that our lives are in your hands. And even when things do go bad, you always turn it for good. God, remind us of your promises so that we may get a better understanding of what you truly want for us. We pray today that you would reveal to us our special purpose. Help us to seek you out, to turn to the Bible, to pray for direction to follow your will, 
and to live a life focused on Christ's image. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thanks, Rebecca. We're going to gather around the table of communion now, and if you haven't got your elements, your bread and your cup, then please go and grab that and come back and we'll enjoy a time of communion together. I'd like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and from verse 23. And this is the Apostle Paul instructing the Corinthian church about the communion table. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I just love those words. He says, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. I just love that. It's for you. Jesus suffered on the cross. He died on the cross, took our sin, our corruption, our punishment, everything that we deserved, he took upon himself on the cross and he did it for you and he did it for me. He came not to be served but to serve. He came to give his life a ransom for many. And so as we participate in the communion this morning, let's remember the fact that Jesus did it for you. He came and did it while we were dead in our sins. He comes into our mess, into our confusion, into the corruption that is in our lives caused by sin and he loves us by giving his life. So let's give thanks today, remembering all that Jesus has done for us on the cross. Let's take the bread and let's eat together. Thank you, Lord. And let's take the cup and remember the blood shed for us, this blood of the new covenant, and as we do, let's do it with thanksgiving, proclaiming the Lord's death in anticipation of his coming again. Let's drink together and remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you today with all our hearts for all that you've done for us through Jesus. Thank you that he died on the cross for us, took our sins, took them away, washed us clean, restored us to right relationship with the Father. Thank you for healing our lives, spirit, soul, and body. And I pray for people right now watching this, that if they have need for healing, you'd touch their bodies with a healing power, with a healing touch today in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all that you've done, and we want to celebrate that, and we do it in anticipation of your second coming when you'll stand on the earth again. Lord, we thank you for our salvation today. We thank you for your love for us, and we thank you that you did it all for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So beautiful. Well, one of the exciting things uh, in the life of our church is to see young people developing their gifts. And it's our heart to see young people just tap into what God has uh, gifted them with and to fulfill God's purpose for their lives. And one such person in our church is Joy Odie, and she's developing her preaching gift. And I'm going to invite her now to come and bring the word to us. Thank you, Joy. Uh, hello. Welcome to today's Sunday church. I'm Joy, and I will be... Um, preaching today. So my message is God is fighting for us and my subheading is keep your focus on God. So it says in Jeremiah 29 verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. While I was doing my writing my message, I have noticed that during our tough times or during our hardship, there is something that's always pulling us towards God that makes us shift our focus on Him and to seek Him. It's because during our hardship, that is when our faith is being tested. Now, we can either go two ways. We can completely be completely consumed by our failures, our anxiety, our depression, our guilt, or we can hold on to his words and his promises. Because when we seek him, that's where we'll find him. And where, he, where, where we find him, that's where our comfort and our hope lies. 
2020 has been a challenging year for all of us. At the beginning of the year, we've had fires, floods, volcano eruptions, and recently a pandemic. I remember joking with my mom. I asked her, Mom, is this a sign that God is coming back? <laughs> she said to me, Joy, it looks like it. But she also said that it is also a wake-up call that we need to seek him and focus on God. This pandemic has shaken all of us. Most of us have lost our jobs. We've all been quarantined for a long time and healthcare workers being on the front line. And being afraid of not knowing when and where this pandemic will strike again or the virus will strike again. During these difficult times, our focus has been on the battles that is right in front of us. That we have forgotten that God has already gone before us, that he has already won this battle and has come out victorious. And we forget that he, he is fighting our battle. In 2 Chronicles 20 verse 15, he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and who and all who live in Judea and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord has said to you. Do not be afraid or be discouraged because of this vast army, for this battle is not yours, but God's. I've been listening to a preacher called Stephen Furtick recently, and one of his preaching is called When the Battle Chooses You. And I remember what he said was that when you come across a situation that is out of your control, it is not your battle to fight, but God's. And the only way that you can win it is to keep your focus on him. Recently, I have been on placement. Um, and most of us students were afraid of being in, in a ward where or a hospital that the virus is being exposed to. And being on the front line can be scary for students. But for me, I wasn't scared of being exposed to the virus. I was scared of the expectations that I needed to meet. And during my shift, I had an RN that I had an RN that um, kind of, <laughs> I had an RN that asked me about medications and what they're used for or what they do and everything. And to be honest, I sat there and I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I remember his feedback to me and that, sh that feedback really shook me. And to be honest, that's where it triggered my anxiety. Now, during that time, my, my mindset wasn't really good. My mental health was really bad. And on top of that, I had, I had assignments. And I remember being so anxious to the point where I was crippled by it. Like, yeah, I would get anxious about certain things or certain situation, but never to the point where I was crippled by it. I remember walking into the hospital, and midway through, I would have an anxiety attack. I would try to seek comfort in others, but I would always get disappointed. But the person who I should have gone to in the first place was God. I remember I was at a friend's house and I opened up to her about my situation and she said to me that Joy, surrender your problems to him because only he can give you the comfort that you seek. And from that day on, I listened to praise and worship, I listened to preachings and I would speak authority over my anxiety. And every time I would enter the hospital, I would enter with my full armor of God. I would also pray over the building, the staffs, the nurses, and the patients. During that season of my life, 
I have learned that I could not overcome my battles by myself or by my own strength, but by his. I was so blinded by my anxiety that I forgot that God has already handled my situation, that he already won my battles. All I needed to do was to allow him to willingly place me where he wanted me to be. Whatever situation or battles that you are facing, know that you are not alone. That the only way to win this battle is to keep your focus on God and to seek him. I remember talking to mom about quitting my course because it was just too much for me to handle. She told me the story of Jonah. Jonah tried to run away from God because he just didn't want to go where God wanted him to be. He was afraid of what would happen. And I remember entering my first day of my shift. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how my patients would react or behave. And I was just so scared. And on top of that, with my anxiety, I was even more scared of what my shift would bring. And no matter how many times we run away, God will always bring us to where he wants us to be. We just need to be willing and just allow him to place us where he wants us to be. No matter how hard or no matter how difficult the situation is, God will always bring us through it. We just need to be obedient. In 2 Chronicles in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord that he will give you. Judea and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Now my question is, what would you do if you came face to face with a battle that sneaked up from behind you? Would you stay down or will you take your position and stand firm? Let us pray. Lord, I speak authority over the spirit of anxiety, depression, fear, worry, and sickness, that it no longer has a hold on us, that the chains have been broken. Lord, remind us that we are healed, that we are covered by your blood. I pray for this virus that it would be gone. I pray for healing for those who are affected. Thank you, Lord, that there are no more active cases here in the South. And, Lord, I pray that this will continue, not just in Australia, but for the whole world. I pray that during these times, Lord, that you remind us to fix our focus on you. And I pray that during our tough times and our good times that we continue to seek you because, Lord, only you have the power to comfort and heal us. Lord, remind us that this battle is not ours but yours. And I pray... And Lord, I pray that you just be with us through these tough times. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Joy. Really appreciate your word today. Um, I, I'd like to spend a moment in prayer, you know, for you and for your family, uh, for, for the nation. You know, I think that it's so wonderful that in times of difficulty and trouble, we have a God who is our ever-present help in time of trouble. And so I'm praying that God will touch your heart today. So let's come away uh, to look to the Lord and let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you hear our prayers. And Lord, we pray for those watching now and their families. God, that the coming weeks you would intervene, you would sustain, you would help, you would undertake in their circumstances. God, if they need finances, that you would provide miraculously. If they need a job, provide them with that. Father, I pray that with whatever comes over the over the course of the next weeks, that you would provide and sustain each one that is watching and their families in Jesus' name. We pray for our nation, God, that you'd help us to get back on our feet economically, but also that you would provide a vaccine, not only for us, of course, but for the whole world, so that uh, there is a pathway forward uh, to bless the nations. God, we just pray for that in, in, the name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those that are watching now that don't know you. God, that you would move on their hearts and and if you don't know Jesus uh, today, I wonder if you could pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, and you can repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I give my life to you. 
because you gave your life to me. I received Jesus' forgiveness of sins. I turn away from my sins and I turn to you. I confess Jesus is Lord, my Lord, and my Savior. I thank you, Lord, that you promise eternal life to those who believe in Jesus. I receive that by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, I encourage you, please, get in touch with us. Our inf uh, communication information is uh, online if you'd like to be in touch with us. And we'd just love to be able to connect with you and pray for you. So uh, check out www.newlifeonline.org.au and you can find all the details there. I want to encourage you to connect with us again next Sunday morning at Home Church Online at 10 a.m., uh, New Life Christian Centre TV on YouTube and on Facebook also. You know, I think it's uh, an interesting time in which we live with churches going online, but I think it's a great opportunity as well to reach more and more people. So let your friends know, let, let family know, let as many people know as you can to connect with us online uh, each week. So I trust that your week's going to be a blessed one. And as we come to a close of our service now, um, just would like you to watch something and then our team is going to come and lead us in a closing song. God bless you. Humbled himself and carried the cross.